بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أي لحظة في الله continuing on in our study of the treaty Shar Sunnah by Imam Barbahari rahimahullah ta'ala Imam Barbahari rahmatullahi he said in the 22nd point we've reached the 22nd uh, point here where he said rahmatullahi Wal Iman Bil Anbiya Wa Malaika. So Iman Baba Hari Rahmatullahi <coughs> He said to have faith in the prophets and the angels. And Iman in the Malaika and in the Anbiya. It's mentioned all throughout the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says with regards to the Anbiya, the, the, the Prophets, alayhim afdal salatu wa salam, Mubashirin wa mundirin la illa yukun lil nasi ala Allahi hujja ba'd al rasul. Wa kana Allah azizun hak, azizun hakima. In Surah Al Nisa, Allah subhanahu what Ta'ala says in verse 165 about the Anbiya, those prophets, that they were givers of glad tidings, mean Jannah and, and the paradise and the great rewards, Tawheed, bringing the message of Tawheed. Wamundirin, and they were warners against the prohibitions and against uh, the punishment that would be given to those who disobeyed the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is so that they would be bring the evidence from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the people you know they would bring the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the people so that the people would have no excuse after they received a messenger they would have no excuse. And Allah is Azizin Hakima. Ayul Habitifillah. The NBA of Allah, they were all sent with the message of Tawheed. And this is why when we hear statements of people who say that we should prioritize ourselves with the Quran, what the Quran prioritizes with. But then they say theological debates and discussions about where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is irrelevant. Then we see a contradiction because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all throughout the Quran brings us Tawheed and all the aspects of Tawheed. Tawheed al-Asma'i wa Sifat, which will destroy the debates of those people who negate those divine names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or change the meaning of them or distort their meaning and this is Tawheed and Tawheed ar the Lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which refutes those people who believe in making partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or that Allah shares his mulk and dominion and his creation with the authority of, of someone else but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of the heavens and earth he's the owner of all things and all things return back to him subhanahu inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un and the Quran also speaks of tawheed Al-Uluhiya, all throughout about Tawheed Al-Uluhiya or Tawheed Al-Ibadah meaning the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone that all of our worship should be directed to Allah 
that we should supplicate only to Allah. Ad'u Allah. We worship only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We pray to Him, we make salat to Him, we make hajj for Him. We go out, fi sabi lillah, lillah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. All those things we do for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake. This is the message of all the prophets. And in this regard, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fi kitabi al kareem, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ رَسُولٍ إِنِّعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُ تَعْبُودٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ رَسُولٍ That we sent to every nation a messenger declaring worship Allah alone and avoid those things which those ones uh, worshipped besides him, subhanahu, the Tawarid. In that ayah, Ayyul Habatifillah, contains two of the things we were just mentioning. For one, it's evidence that the messengers were sent to the various nations and peoples as warners and as propagators of Tawheed. It also illustrates Ayyul Habatifillah that Tawheed is where we should begin our call and that the Quran prioritizes with Tawheed in contrast to those who say that there are other priorities. Over theological discussions. Wallahu musta'an. Ayyul Habitu Fillah, Ahlul Sunnah, affirms and believes in all of the prophets and messengers. Alayhim Athil Salatu Salam. Those who we have heard of and we have some details about from the Quran or from the authentic Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And those who we don't know about, we believe in them. We may not know their details, but as long as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, He has sent messengers to every nation. To those nations before. And some of them, we don't know their names. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't reveal those names in the Quran. Or the Prophet didn't mention their names in the authentic sunnah. We still believe in them. Ijmali. In general, we believe in them. We don't know their details. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of His infinite wisdom, did not see it as something necessary for us to come closer to Him, for us to know those details. That's why Ahlul Sunnah stops with the Nasus and doesn't have to speculate and, and make excessive inferences about things, especially related to Aqidah, especially related to your creed. But instead we accept the Nasus. We accept what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and we believe in it. And we accept what the, the, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said and we believe in it. And we don't have to go beyond those nasus and question. And there are many ayat to affirm this belief of Ahlul Sunnah and that ijma of the Muslims, the consensus of the Muslims is that there were messengers and they were the best of mankind and they were the most truthful, the most righteous, and Allah chose them subhanahu wa ta'ala to carry His message, to deliver the various books that were relevant or for those particular people. But the message of Tawheed was one thing they all shared. As we mentioned, the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ الرَّسُولٍ إِنْ نِعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُ تَعْبُودٍ That's Tawheed right there. That we sent to every message, uh, every nation a messenger. 
to worship Allah alone, there's Tawheed. Tawheed al-Ibadah, Tawheed al-Uluhiyah, which study Tawood, and to avoid those things, worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's shunning shirk. And that's the essence of Islam, and that's the essence of Tawheed. And it's the main purpose of the messengers. And it's the purpose of our life, is this Tawheed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us all throughout the Quran to believe in the messengers and what they were revealed with, what they came with. And to believe in the books and to believe in the, in the angels. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al-kareem, Amina rasulu bima unzila ilayhi. مِنْ رَبِّهِ وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ كُلٌّ آمِنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةِ وَكُتُوبِهِ وَرَسُولِهِ In Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 285, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the messenger believed with, uh, in what was revealed to him. The Prophet sallallahu believed in the Qur'an from his Lord and the mu'minun. Meaning that the believers also believe in what was revealed to the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, and the Prophets in fact. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, all believe in Allah, His angels, His books, and His messengers. That's evidence from the Quran in the pillars of Iman, or at least some of the pillars of Iman. And then in the hadith of Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, when he asked the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam about Iman, the Prophet sallallahu rabbi wasalamu alayhi said, and tu'mina billahi wal malaikati wa kutubihi wa rasulihi wal yawm al-akhir, wa tu'mina bi qadri khayrihi wa shar. The Prophet ﷺ said, when asked about what is Iman, the pillars of Iman, he said it's to believe in Allah and His angels and His books and His messengers and the Day of Judgment and to believe in the divine destiny, the good and the evil of it. So Ahl Sunnah believes, and this is the relevance why Imam Bahari mentioned this, that this is a, in his book Shara Sunnah, is because all of this is a part of the Sunnah. The Sunnah referred to here is the Sunnah is, is Islam. And that's why he said in the beginning of his book, what did he say? Al-Islam huwa Sunnah wa Sunnah to heal Islam. He said Islam is the Sunnah and the Sunnah is Islam and you can't have one uh, without the other. That you need that. That the Sunnah is Islam. You can't separate it. Because you don't know Islam without the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You can't possibly practice the Quran without the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You can't possibly know what to believe fully without the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and know the details of the Quran. And how to practice. It comes from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. And that's the affirmation amongst the many evidences from Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about the angels and the messengers. And Ahl Sunnah believes, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is illustrating the Quran and through the authentic Sunnah, the Message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the angels had different roles and duties. That the angels were created from fire. Uh, that the angels were created uh, from, from nur, 
from light. And that they do everything that they're told to do by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't make mistakes. They're perfectly obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the various tasks that they are assigned, they do perfectly. This is the aqid of Ahl Sunnah. And so we'll keep it general instead of going in all to the details of uh, the details that we know from the authentic Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah about those angels, Malak al Maut, the, the angel of death, uh, Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam, his duty in carrying the, 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 the revelations, and the various other malaika and their duties, the ones that are mentioned with details in the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. We believe in all of them and we believe in, the, believe in them in general. Meaning those who we don't know a name for or know their exact duties and tasks. We believe in them. We believe they exist because in general this is what the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, uh, gives us. Is evidence for. Then Imam Babahari he said in the next point, Will the man who be end of Jannatal Haq, will not Haq, will end of Huma Machlukatan, Al Jannatu Fisama is Sabia, will suck for her Al Arsh, will not Tahtal Tahtal Ardi Sabiati Sufla, وهما مخلوقتان قد علم الله تعالى عدد أهل الجنة ومن يدخلها وعدد أهل النار ومن يدخلها لا تفنيان أبدا هما بقاؤهما مع بقاء الله أبدا أبدين والدار الداهرين Imam Babahari he said to have faith that paradise is true and real and that the fire is true and real and that both are already created the fire uh, Jannah and Nar and the hellfire are already present they were already created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala paradise is in the seventh heaven its ceiling is the throne the throne of Ar-Rahman the fire is beneath the seventh and lowest earth. They are both created. Allah the Most High knew the number of inhabitants of paradise and those who would enter it and the number of those who are the inhabitants of the fire and those who would enter it. Neither of them will ever end. They will both last along with Allah forever and ever. Jinnah and Nar exist and will continue to exist. And in the hadith of Isra and Mi'raj, it shows the presence and the existence of paradise and the fire. And also in Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim and Imam Sin'ani mentioned in a very important book of his Called entitled Ruf al Astar, and where he made the argument or he argued against those who claim that the fire would end, the hellfire would be put out. So Ayyullah Habatif Allah, Jannah and Nar, they exist. And this is the aqeedah of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. And Jannah, Iddit lil Muttaqeen. Jannah is prepared for the pious and righteous. Wal Nar, Iddit lil Kafirin. And the hellfire is prepared for those who disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.
And as far as the descriptions of Jannah and Nar, we'll reserve those for another time. And some of the ahadith we've mentioned in other lectures go back to Aqidah Tawasatiya talking about some of the pleasures of Jannah and some of the pleasure some of the uh, punishments of the fire, and some of the details therein. The next point Imam Baba Hari Rahimullah Ta'ala mentioned the twenty fourth point he said Rahimullah Ta'ala Wa Adamu alayhi salam Kanafil Jannati Al Baqiya Al Mahluka Fa Uhrija Minha Badama Asa Wa Azawa Jal. He said that Adam, the father of mankind, alayhi salatu salam, was present in the everlasting and created paradise. Was what but was removed from it after disobeying the law, the mighty and majestic. This is also part of the Aqid of Ahl Sunnah, and this is why Imam Baba Hari mentioned it in Shara Sunnah. And the evidence for this is in Surah Al-Baqarah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitabihi al-kareem wa kulna ya adam askun anta wa zawjata al-jannata wa kula minha ragadin haythu shittuma wa la taqraba hadihi shajarata fatukuna min al-zalimeen فأزلهما الشيطان عنها فأخرجهما مما كان فيه وكو نحبة بعضكم لبعض عدو ولكم في الأرض مستقر ومتاع إلهين فتلقى آدم من ربه كلمات فتاب عليه إنه هو تواب الرحيم وكو نحبة منها جميعا فإما يأتينكم مني هدى فالم فمن تبع هدايا فلا خوف عليهم ولا ولا هم يحزنون. الله سبحانه وتعالى says في كتاب في كتابه الكريم. And we said, O Adam, dwell you and your wife in the paradise, and eat both of you freely with pleasure and delight of things therein as wherever you will, but come not near this tree, or you both will be of the wrongdoers. Then the shaitan made them slip therein from paradise and got them out from that in which they were. We said, get you down all with enmity between yourselves. On earth will be a dwelling place for you and an enjoyment for a time. Then Adam received from his Lord words and his Lord pardoned him, accepted his repentance. Verily, he is the one who forgives the most merciful. And we said, or we said, get down all of you from this place, referring to paradise. Then whenever there comes to you guidance from me, and whoever follows my guidance, there shall be no fear on them, nor shall they grieve. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be of those who follow his guidance and seek forgiveness from him and believe in the correct aqidah, the aqidah of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, and follow the minhaj of the Salaf of this Ummah. And may Allah bless us with ikhlas. With the battle of Sunnah and Nabi, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and may Allah subhanahu wa taala grant us forgiveness for our many, many sins and bless us with a class with the bat. Wassallallahu alaihi wasallam, ala Nabiina Muhammad, wa ala alihi wasahbihi wasallam.